hi hi everyone how's your saturday <laughs> hope you're having a great time okay i'm good so today i just wanted to share with you a few tips uh on how to purchase or how to choose a sewing machine so if you're looking to buy a sewing machine here are some tips for you and let's get into it okay so the very first tip that will give you a pointer of the machine that you are going to be able to buy is your budget of course you need to know how much money you're willing to spend to acquire that machine because there are many options to you on how you to on how to purchase a machine you can either purchase a brand new machine you can either purchase a second hand machine or a refurbished machine and i can tell you all those machines will go for a different price on the market so you need to know how much is available to you for for that machine unless someone is going to be offering it to you but if you really intending to go and spend on it you need to know what your budget is because some machines even if they are what you need for your projects or for your business might be out of reach to you just because of how much they are costing okay so that is tip number one tip number two is for you to know or to identify what kind of projects you're going to be sewing with that machine what are you going to be using it for so for example if you are like me and you are into apparel kind of projects that is sewing clothes you need a machine that is you know appropriate for that and um, you can also decide whether you want to buy a machine online or you want to walk into a store or a dealer's and choose your machine so deciding the kind of projects you'll be using it for is very very important if you're going to be sewing for example very heavy kind of fabric like layers of denim if you're going to be sewing bags if you're going to be sewing maybe shoes you need a powerful machine that can be able to penetrate through those thick layers of fabric okay if you need to be you're going to be using it for let's say masks cloth masks you don't really need to spend so much getting a machine that is you know so strong and because those will always cost more by the way a normal machine basic machine will be able to work for you know masks and and diys crafts and that kind of a thing so yeah you need to know what your projects are or what you're going to be using it for okay another tip warranty especially mm -hmm. if you're buying a brand new machine you need to read and understand the, understand the terms and conditions of the warranty of the machine. I know that there are machines that have got different warranties for different parts of the machine. So one, one part of the machine might have a warranty of 12 months. Another part of the same machine might be given a warranty of maybe one year, six months, two years. So very, very important read and understand those terms so that if your machine should break down, you know that you can take it back to your dealer or to your supplier or to the store and they can either fix it for you or they can give you a brand new machine okay so moving on you also need to read reviews of the machine that you intend to buy okay read um uh, you can go online, you can go on YouTube, you can go, you can Google, you can go on Facebook. There's so many platforms that you can go and read about the brands that, or the, the kind of machine that you're intending to buy. See what people who are already working with those machines have to say. They probably have, you know, had some experiences. And if they've experienced challenges, you would be aware of those and think of how you're going to resolve it even before you purchase the machine. Okay. So yeah, I hope this is being helpful to you. You also need to know the functions of the machine itself. So very, very important. When I purchased my first machine, I asked one of the tutors at the fashion school that I was at and he was able to recommend a certain brand. And I actually purchased, he, he gave me three options. And those are the machines, that, those are the brands that they use in that school. So I bought one of those um, one of those brands and so far I can't complain because I've been using that machine and it has worked well, okay? So you need to be looking at the functions of the machine. So I was about to say a very, very important function that you want to have on your machine is a buttonhole function, okay? Because if you're going to be sewing clothes 
and your machine that you, you are about to purchase or that you have purchased does not have that function, it means you would have to outsource. And that can be inconveniencing, it can be a little bit expensive, especially if you are making many pieces, okay? So you want to have a machine that can create or that can make button holes, very, very important. And when you are looking at those functions of button holes, there are two mechanisms, okay? There's a mechanical uh, mechanism which is known as the four step buttonhole, meaning that you, the person who is sewing, has to create the, 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 but, the, the, the buttonhole. It's like a rectangle. The basic shape would be a rectangle. I know that different machines have different shapes of buttonholes, but especially if you're a beginner, that really is not necessary. What you need to know is how to make that basic one. So on a mechanical one, which is um, a four step buttonhole, um, function you have to decide to the size of the button that is the length and the width so you choose where the machine starts to sew up and then go across come down and then sew across again to create that rectangle and if you are new sometimes that can be intimidating but you can overcome then you you have the other function which is automated so that's known as a one-step buttonhole and in that system or that mechanism you just place the button there's a place where you place the button and the machine will measure or calculate the size of that button and it will be able to create once you press the button it will create the button hole for you and that is the difference like from day to night i'm telling you it's very very easy and it makes you work just you know more plain sailing not to say that you shouldn't buy a machine that uses uh, four step buttonhole. If you look at this machine, this is a Singer Heavy Duty, but it has this uh, mechanical system where you actually have to create the buttonhole. So I was able to work with that. I'm sure you can also. I'm just trying to give you pointers on what kind of things that you should be considering when you're looking at buying or purchasing a sewing machine. So another point when you're looking at the features is a thread cutter. Uh, I'm not sure that you can see this, but just by the side here, there is a thread cutter on this machine because sometimes your scissors might be far, your own thread cutter might also be far, but when you have it on the machine, it's easy for you to cut the threads. So that's maybe one of the things that you can look at. There are also machines that come with um, a needle threader. That is, it helps you to, th to put your thread into the needle's eye especially if you're sewing at night or maybe if you have difficulties with your sight okay so that is very very helpful those are some of the things that you should be looking at another important pointer that i would um, give you is look for machines that have an adjustable speed um, function or button because if you are new especially if you're new to sewing these machines can be very very fast some machines are very very fast especially if you're looking at industrial machines they can sew i know the machines that sew a thousand stitches per minute so that is very very fast but when you are starting out that can be something that you know you might not be comfortable to work with at a very high speed so if you're able to adjust your speed downwards until you become more comfortable you can uh, uh, gradually adjust your speed upwards because also imagine that you are sewing things or, or joining pieces that are long long strips of fabric and you have like bunches of them you want a machine that can sew very very fast you press and it just goes okay so that is a very very important function another pointer that i would really uh such this really is it's um maybe a service more than um a pointer that is directly uh, related to the machine is just for you to look around and find out before you purchase the machine um, where are you going to have your machine serviced because there will be a time that you will need to service the machine and you need to look around beforehand some people will just buy the machine and they really don't bother if you know they can easily have that machine fixed especially if you are buying it secondhand you probably 
uh, are not going to have the warranty. Maybe the, the person has owned this machine beyond the period that the machine was, you know, um, given the warranty. So you need to know when the time comes for you to sell this machine, the, your machine, where are you going to do it? When I, I bought my machine, I bought it from uh, dealers that actually work with that particular brand. So I don't have an issue with that. I just take it in and they clean it, they, you know, service it, and the machine continues working. So, yeah, you need to be looking at such kinds of things, and I hope that those pointers will help you choose the perfect machine for you, and um, so that you can continue sewing. And if you are a beginner, I hope that it will help you practice more. And you also don't need to, especially if you're just starting out, you don't need to waste a lot of money or spend a lot of money on buying a very expensive machine because really you are just starting out you only want to learn how to sew and then you'll be improving gradually and as you go you can think of upgrading and getting um, a high or top grade um, machine last but not least is the weight of the machine it's very very important because uh, if you've noticed machines that are metallic and have got metallic parts um, are more durable so if you look in the olden days you find that the machines that were used by our grandparents still function up to today they have been working and you know operating for decades many many years and they're still uh, working and, and, and functioning well that is because the parts that they were, uh, were used in putting together that machine mostly were metallic but nowadays you find that most of them machines that we have come with plastic parts this is heavy duty thing it has some plastic parts but it, uh, it also has metallic parts on the inside so when you lift this machine it's heavy so that is an indication to you that it's probably of a higher quality when you lift the machine and it feels quite light that is an indication to you that the machine um, is made of plastic parts especially on the inside and we all know that even though the machine might work for many years it will not be as durable as the ones that are made out of metallic parts. That's why it's very, very difficult for you to get those classic machines because they're quite pricey. When you find them on the market, when you find them online, very, very pricey because they know that when you buy a machine that has, you know, it's all metallic or it has most of its parts are metallic, it means you're buying a, a machine probably for a lifetime okay so those are some of the things other things for me like in my case really doesn't matter because i know there are people who will look just at the shape of the machine maybe it's too boxy this might be too boxy for some people they want maybe one that looks a little bit oval for some people the color will matter um for me those are not things that would decide for me or will be like a, a deal breaker okay so i just wanted to come in quickly and share these tips for you if you are planning on purchasing a sewing machine those are some of um the things that you should be looking out for so have fun and good luck as you go and purchase your machine and have a pleasant saturday bye bye <laughs>